there, I'm Wendy Connors, and welcome to Grace Pace, an online video series we're doing in collaboration with Maze Lake Ministries just outside of Chicago in Downers Grove, Illinois. I'm the founder of Stringing Pearls Bible Study Ministry, also right outside of Chicago, Illinois. If you have any questions or just want to check in with either one of us along the way, right underneath this video box that you're watching right now are the links to both of our websites. So I hope you would use both of those as kind of a resource as we go along in this Bible study. Now we're calling our Bible study Grace Pace, experiencing God's grace in the midst of life's race. And Grace Pace is going to be centered around the promise that Jesus gave us for living freely and lightly in the unforced rhythms of grace that he himself told us about in the Gospel of Matthew in chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. But we'll get to more of that in a minute. First of all, I want to say, if this is your first time ever doing a Bible study series, I am thrilled to have you with us. And I wish I could kind of jump through the camera right now and give you a big hug and welcome you to our team. And if this is your first time, you might be wondering, what's the big deal about doing a Bible study? What is in the Bible for me? Well, I'm glad that you asked. Because this is the Bible, and it is a beautiful book. It is full of the living, breathing Word of God that, even though it was written thousands of years ago, is still poignant and relevant to us today. And yes, while it is one big book, I'm here to tell you that it's full of about 70 other books that start with Genesis and end with Revelation. And each of those books, although they could stand on their own, are beautiful when strung together almost like little pearls and create something beautiful and something meaningful that we can use to breathe this, the winds of spiritual revival right back into your life no matter where you are no matter what circumstances you are no matter what life season you might find yourself in this book this this Bible it speaks of God's amazing love and care and compassion for you and for me and for all those who know him or want to get to know him better. And so in the weeks that we've been preparing for this video, I want you to know that both myself and my ministry team, as well as the ministry team here at Maze Lake, has been praying for you and hoping that the Holy Spirit is already working in your heart and in your spirit to prepare you for all that we're going to be talking about and exploring and learning together over these seven weeks. Now, if this is your first time doing an online Bible study, I have just a little secret to share with you because it's my first time doing an online Bible study series as well. So as much as I'm praying for you, I hope that you'll also be praying for me and for this team that's working on the video, that we would have the patience and learn right along with you how this online Bible study thing is going to work. But I'm confident that God is with us. And just because we aren't in the same room with one another today, it doesn't mean that we can't share in one another's growth. In this Bible study series, Jesus himself assures us that when two or more are gathered in his name, he is surely present with us. So I know he's present with us today, and he will be each and every time we meet. So back to that Gospel of Matthew, chapter 11, 28 through 30, that I was talking to you about. The Gospel of Matthew, as you may know, is in the New Testament. And I just want to read to you what Jesus himself talks about in terms of us walking a pace of grace, the pace that God always intended for our lives to go by, even today in this busy world that we live in. Listen to what Jesus says. He says, are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me, and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Now, unforced rhythms of grace, I think that sounds very appealing. I don't know about you. Now, this is a metronome. You may have seen one before, but it's a device or a tool that's mostly used by musicians and dancers. And it helps music or movements to kind of grow from a clumsy, awkward, practicing piece into something that's moving imperfectly in time. 
with how the creator or composer or choreographer meant that piece to run. Now, when I was learning how to play the game of golf a few years ago, I started taking lessons from a local golf pro. And after a while of watching my swing, he said, Wendy, stop. Your swing is choppy. Now, I had to ask him to explain what that meant. And what he meant was, the tempo with which I would take the club away was not the same as the tempo with which I was bringing my club back to meet the ball. So when I would try to hit the ball, I'd either miss the ball or it just wouldn't go in the direction that I was aiming or intending it to go. So he taught me this little rhyme. He said, every time you address the ball, I want you to say something to yourself, and I want you to say it in the same tempo every time. And he said, that rhyme is, one, two, three, golf with me. One, two, three, golf with me. And to this day, I still use that when I go golfing so that my takeaway is going at the same tempo, the same beat as my downswing. And that allows from the ball to not only be hit, but to go exactly where it's supposed to go most of the time. And it lets my club do what it was intended to do freely and lightly. Now this idea of a steady rhythm and things moving the way in which they're intended to do doesn't just apply to music or music or golf. It actually applies to many areas of life. So if we are to learn to live freely and lightly, as Jesus talked about in Matthew 11, we have to begin with this, this living, breathing word of God. And something that I guess we can refer to as our spiritual metronome, if you will. Because when we immerse ourselves in scripture, when we let it wash over us, almost recalibrate the way, the rhythm in which we're walking, I think we'll find that our lives become a little less chaotic, maybe a bit more peaceful, and that our soul feels like it's living maybe the way it should have. So if we remember back to Matthew 11, 28 through 30, and if we look close enough and we sort of reach in and dig through all those words that Jesus was saying, we can break it down into three simple steps, just like the one, two, three, golf with me. It's what I like to call the Matthew 11, 28 through 30 equation, and that's this. Jesus says three very important things. He starts off by saying, come to me. Then he says, walk with me, watch me. Finally, he says, learn from me. And if we do those three things, we end up exactly where he's always intended us to be. Live like me. So that's where we're headed together on this journey. Finding godly and spiritually, spiritually based ways of getting our rhythm back. To stop letting the busyness of life bump into our happy let us get off course or off beat, and instead learn to use scripture and prayer as tools to allow God control our busyness and our schedules instead of letting our schedules control us. We're going to learn to live in the unforced rhythms of grace, freely and lightly. Now, regardless of what season you might find yourself living in right now, whether your calendar like mine is full to overflowing, or whether you're looking for things to fill in to your schedule. Maybe you're finding yourselves walking in a rut circle of doing the same things day in and day out, or, or maybe you feel like you're spinning out into orbit with so many things to do. Even if you're just plugging along at a grace pace that feels good to you, I promise you there will be something for everyone in this online series with us and let you have an opportunity to get back to the unforced rhythms of grace, living freely and lightly with Jesus at a steady tempo and at peace. How are we gonna do that? Well, over the next seven weeks, we're going to be diving into scripture together and meeting people and hearing stories of their lives who maybe just like us struggled with the issues of life getting in the way and, 
experiencing God's intended grace pace seemed out of reach for them. But most importantly, we're going to be learning ways in which God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit taught them how to come back into those grace pace moments. For instance, starting next week, we'll be popping into the kitchen with a woman named Martha, who with her sister Mary is preparing a meal for none other than Jesus himself. We'll see what happens when Moses, yes, Moses, suffers some um, monumental sized meltdowns in the midst of the leadership and all the things that God has called him to do. And we'll find out how God leads him back to a place where he's able to do things freely and lightly. We'll hear the backstory of the woman at the well when she meets Jesus and what he offers her instead of having to live with the labels that people have placed on her or letting her past define her, we'll learn that it's what Jesus says about us that truly defines us and really matters. We'll be taking a look at the story of the Good Samaritan, only this time from a fresh perspective. We'll be looking at it from the lens of the poor soul found on the side of the road and asking, learning that asking for help is really a form of gratitude and showing mercy this side of heaven. We'll be spending some time in the belly of a whale with Jonah and learning that while fear can bump us far off the course we ever thought we'd travel, as long as we trust God, we'll come out the other side better for it. And finally, we'll be wrapping up by summarizing all we've learned together in these seven weeks and we'll spend a little time in such a precious, holy week of Easter, learning what living in the unforced rhythms of grace, just like Lisa, Jesus would look like for us today. So each week, I'm going to leave you with three things that I'd like for you to do between our sessions together. I don't care if you call it homework or just opportunities for spiritual growth, but no matter what you call them, I encourage you to do them. And the great thing is, that each week, like I said, our websites are located just below the video that you're watching right now. And if you go to my website, that's Stringing Pearls Bible Study Ministry, you'll find on there is a tab that says Grace Pace. If you click on Grace Pace, it'll take you to a new page where each of our seven weeks will have its own link. And on those links, everything that we talk about in these videos will be summarized. In addition, your Opportunities for Spiritual Growth homework will be listed there as well. You'll also have the opportunity to click on links to take you to the scriptures that we read together as well. So the three things I'm asking you to do this week are the following. First, I'd like you to find a piece of paper or a note card and write down our guiding scripture passage for this series, Matthew 11, verses 28 through 30. And write it down on that piece of paper or a note card and place it in a prominent place whether it be on your refrigerator or a bathroom mirror, even on the dashboard of your car, but somewhere that you're sure to see it every day. And each day I want you to read it and let the truth of that scripture seep into your spirit and into your soul. Second, I want you to spend a little bit of time in prayer and ask God what he might be telling you through that scripture, because I guarantee you, he's trying to tell you something. And finally, on the back of that card, wherever you've written it, I want you to write down our Matthew, equa Matthew 11, 28 through 30 equation. The come with me, walk with me, learn from me, equals live like me, because we're going to be coming back to that throughout this series. So on behalf of Stringing Pearls with Wendy and my Bible study ministry and of Maze Lake Ministries, we want to thank you so much for spending a little bit of your precious time with us here today. We know life is busy we hope that this has given you an opportunity to take a deep breath and have some grace. We'll see you next week as we step inside a hot, busy kitchen in the home of Lazarus, where his sisters Mary and Martha are preparing a meal for Jesus. And we'll see how details in life can sometimes bump into someone's happy and get them off course. Jesus says that when we ask for something in his name, it will be granted. So I ask that God bless you in wonderful ways this week. And until we meet again, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless.